Before you start Lesson 30, make sure you complete Test F on Lines, Angles, and Polygons. Lesson 30 is a really important lesson. You'll learn some really important skills here about common denominators. You'll learn what those are, and then you'll learn about adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators. Look at practice problem A. Compare those two fractions. That's what I want you to do there. And tell me if one's greater, less than, or are they equal to each other. Well, in order to tell that, you have to get common denominators first. And do you remember how to change the denominator of a fraction? If you don't, you might want to go back to lesson 15 where we talked about equivalent fractions. So what we want to do here to compare these fractions is have common denominators because it doesn't make much sense to compare three-fourths and two-thirds. We need to make an equivalent fraction of three-fourths and an equivalent fraction of two-thirds where they both would have the same denominator. And for these two, they, would, they could both have a denominator of 12, right? If we took the three-fourths and multiplied it by three over three and the two-thirds by four over four, now just go ahead and work on that. 3 over 3 is 9 over 12. And then 2 thirds times 4 over 4 would be 8 over 12. So now we can easily see 9 is greater than 8. We have the same denominators. So 9 twelfth is greater than 8 twelfths. And there we have our comparison. So did you see what we did there to get common denominators? We had to multiply each fraction by a fraction that equaled 1. On the left, we multiplied by 3 over 3. On the right, by 4 over 4. And then we got a common denominator. Now, notice that common denominator, 12, that's the least common multiple for those two numbers, 4 and 3. Just think about it. 3, 6, 9, 12, 4, 8. 12, remember the least common multiple? That's the lowest multiple between those two numbers that they have in common. 12 is the 1. That's what you do when you're comparing numbers and you're trying to get common denominators for both of them. You have to figure out what the lowest common multiple is. Now, this problem was pretty easy because it was just 4s and 3s we were dealing with. Later on, though, it might get a little more complex, and the best way to do this is to find the least common multiple first, and then you'll know that that's what your denominator needs to be. Now, in B, I want you to compare those two numbers, 5 sixteenths and 7 twelfths. Well, first, let's find our least common multiple, and that will tell us what the denominator for both of them needs to be. 16, that would just be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 12 would be 4 times 3, or 2 times 2 times 3. So our least common multiple is going to have to be, we pick the four twos, and then let's just add a 3 up here. That'll be 16 times 3 is 48. That's what our least common multiple is between those two numbers. So that means that's what our denominators need to be for those two fractions in order to compare them and in order to give them both common denominators. So 5 sixteenths. To get 48 in the denominator, we need to multiply above and below by 3. Or multiply it by a fraction that's equal to 1, but it's 3 over 3. That's the fraction that we use that's equal to 1. On the right, we would do 4 over 4 to get 48 in the denominator. And now we just do 15. 3 times 5 is 15 over 48. And then on the right, we have 28 over 48. So 15 is less than 28, so we put a less than symbol there. 15 48 is less than 28 48. In order to compare fractions, they have to have common denominators. And then we just look at the numerators to tell which fraction is greater. Now let's apply what we know about making common denominators to adding and subtracting fractions. Adding and subtracting fractions is actually a little more complex than multiplying and dividing fractions. 
when we multiply and divide fractions, we don't have to worry about if we have common denominators. We know that when we add and subtract fractions that we have to have common denominators. That's what we've been working on in previous lessons up to now. So now we're going to have fractions that don't have all common denominators. We'll find the least common multiple of the denominators and then change all the denominators so that they all have that least common multiple. Then we can add them. So look at practice problem C. Let's add those three fractions together. First we need to figure out the least common multiple. And so for three, that's just three. Four is two times two. Eight is two times two times two. So we pick the three twos and then the three and we get 24 as our lowest common multiple. Next we'll need to multiply each fraction so that we get 24 as its denominator. So two-thirds needs to be multiplied by eight over eight. One-fourth needs to be multiplied by six over six. Five-eighths by three over three. Now it's a very good idea to show your work on these problems just like I'm doing here. You should have written this problem down on your paper. You shouldn't just be watching right now or anything. You should have written it down and if you want to even you can use a different colored pen just like I do to add in the fractions that are equal to one. Put the 8 over 8, the 6 over 6, and the 3 over 3, and that way you can tell what you're changing from the original problem. Now, go ahead and rewrite this as, and do all your multiplication that you need to. 16 over 24 plus 6 over 24 plus 15 over 24. And now let's add those numerators together. 16 plus 6 is 22, and then add 15 to that, so that would be 37 over 24. We don't want to leave our answer as an improper fraction. You can do division, as always, to change an improper fraction to a mixed number. This one would be 1 and 13 over 24. 1 and 13 24ths would be the answer to that addition problem. Nothing to reduce there in the fraction, so we leave that as our answer. Let's do another one. 3 and 5 sevenths minus 1 and a quarter. We're doing subtraction here. Now we don't have common denominators, so we look at those denominators 7 and 4, and we think of prime factors this one's pretty easy because it's just a 7, which is a prime number. 4 is 2 times 2, so our answer is going to be 7 times 2 times 2, or 28. In order to get 28 for the common denominator, we would have to multiply 5 sevenths by 4 over 4, and 1 fourth by 7 over 7. Now, we just write 3 and 20 over 28 minus 1 and 7 over 28. That's equal to 2 and 13 28ths. And that's our answer. 2 and 13 28ths. We can't reduce that anymore, so we just leave that answer like it is. Let's do another one. Let's add 6 and 5 6 plus 4 and 7 eighths. Now again, that one's fairly easy to do as far as finding the least common multiple of those two denominators. And it would just be 8 times 3, 24. So we need to multiply 5 sixths by 4 over 4. Remember when we're multiplying by 4 over 4, it's the same thing as multiplying by 1. 4 over 4 equals 1. We're not changing the numerical value 5 6 is the same thing as 20 over 24. It just changes the way it looks, right? 7 8 we need to multiply by 3 over 3 to get a denominator of 24 for it. And then we can add those fraction parts together. So we'll have 6 and 20 
over 24 plus 4 and 21 over 24. And that will give us 6 plus 4 is 10 and 41 over 24. Now, 41 over 24, that's an improper fraction. We can't leave it like that. So we have to do division on that 41 over 24, turn just the 41 over 24 into a mixed number of its own, and add the whole number part to the 10. 41 over 24 is the same thing as, let me just write it over here, 1 and 17 24 So that 1 we need to put that in with a 10 and we make it 11 and 17 24 Look at number or letter F, 3 and 1 eighths minus 1 and 2 thirds. So why don't you pause the CD and see if you can figure this out if you're not doing that already and then turn it back on and check your work. Well, you have to get one and one eighth and two thirds to have common denominators, and that would be an eight times three, right? Just twenty-four. So to do that on the left, three eighths we need to multiply, or one eighth we need to multiply by three over three. Then the two thirds by eight over eight, and we'll have twenty-four for our denominators. So we do three and three eighths minus one and 16 24 you can see I made a little mistake there this should be a 24 right now think about this we're trying to do 3 24 minus 16 24 so we can't do that we need to borrow from that 3 in 3 and 3 24 that whole number we need to borrow from it we need to borrow 24 24 right so we make that a 2, and then this will change to 3 plus 24 is 27 over 24. Now we can do our subtraction. 27 minus 16 is 11, and the fraction part is 11 24. 2 minus 1 is 1. There's our answer. 1 and 11 24. Let's do one more problem. This one has some pretty big denominators 25 and 40 so we need to find a lowest common multiple of those two denominators we'll use our prime factorization method 25 is 5 times 5 40 is 8 times 5 or 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 so our lowest common multiple is going to have to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 25 times 8. That's 200. So that's our lowest common multiple for those two fractions. And to make that our common denominator on the left, we need to multiply above and below by 8. On the right, we need to multiply above and below by 5. That will give us 16 over 200 minus 5 over 200 which would simplify to 11 over 200 so to add and subtract fractions our first step is to get common denominators we do that by, by finding the least common multiple between the two existing denominators and then we change them so that they both have that least common multiple for their denominator. Now they don't have to have the least common multiple for their denominators. For example, like on practice problem G, 400 would have worked for both denominators as well. But if you don't use the lowest common multiple, then you have to do some reducing when you're done adding or subtracting the fractions and it's just some extra work so that's why it's good to know how to find the lowest common multiple which you do know how to do now make your denominators equal to that and then you have to do your addition or subtraction 
and when you're done you don't have to do any reducing. Notice we didn't do any reducing on any of these answers. Being able to add and subtract fractions very easily, that's a very, very good skill to have. It'll help you in your science classes later, and it'll help you in your math classes later, of course, as well. So make sure you can do this really good. Do the practice problems that are in the book if you need to, and also this lesson has supplementary practice problems in the back, in the appendix, if you want to do those as well. The better you are at this, the better and easier science and math will be later on for you. Okay, well that's all for Lesson 30. Don't forget to do Investigation 3 after this lesson as well on coordinate planes.